So I didn't make a review for episode 3 because being completely honest, I just didn't really think I had enough to say about it to really justify making a full video or a full review on it. I don't really like making reviews for episodes of things that I don't feel like I can make, you know, 8 to 10 minutes talking about. And episode 3 was kind of like that where I just, I really liked the episode I did, but it was easily my least favourite of the first four episodes. So I was like, it's good, but I kind of just be going, yeah, I like this, yeah, I like that for 2-3 to three minutes and that would kind of be it. So I thought maybe I'd make a video talking about what episode 3 and 4, and good thing I did because episode 4 is the biggest episode of the show yet, and we kind of knew this already when the early reviews came out for the show back in early February, all the people who got to see the episodes had seen the first 4 out of the 6 episodes and they had said that episode 4 was the big one, it's the one that Deny herself has written, and that it's, it's one of the best episodes of The Walking Dead in years if not ever, and... I kind of agree. I thought this was sort of an excellent episode, but really quick, just kind of give some quick thoughts on what I felt about episode 3. I thought it was good. It had a lot of great Rick Michonne moments, kind of our first proper Rick Michonne moments of the show, since episodes 1 and 2 had them pretty much split up for 90% of those two episodes. Episode 3, we finally got to see some scenes together with them that were pretty great. The Rick Jada scenes were great. It was really cool to kind of get more insight into what the hell Jadis and Rick's dynamic is like because we have not seen anything to do with dynamic because obviously Rick wasn't in World Beyond. So it was cool to see a lot of that sort of stuff. And a lot of the lines they gave between the two characters were really good. Seeing Michonne kind of go around the CRM and do a lot of the things that we saw Rick do in episode 1 was pretty cool, which I do really like that this show is handling parallels and like differences between characters in different circumstances but kind of in the same locations like episodes one and two were very much similar in that we were seeing rick and michonne in two very similar parts of their lives but in completely separate places and then episode three was like we were seeing michonne go through a lot of what rick ran through in the first episode and it was kind of cool to see the differences and see how they deal with them and such and that was really good but episode four yeah one of the best walking dead episodes in forever um it's at least my favorite walking dead episode i would say since season 10 one more which was one of the later COVID episodes of season 10 the one that was about aaron gabriel and then had robert patrick there as well that was one of my favorite episodes of the entire show i absolutely love those i love it even more than here's negan but i think a big reason why i love that episode is and the reason why i'm bringing this episode up in particular is because it really reminded me of this episode it was very much a character focused episode mostly focused on dialogue very few locations it was a really interesting episode and this gave me the exact same vibes i felt like this was such a cool character focused episode that was set in very few locations pretty much the entire thing took place in this giant building which was like an apartment building or something i'm not too sure they might have said and i completely forgot but it, it had like gyms and stuff it was like a business building that had a bedroom in it or something like a penthouse suite i don't know i don't know what america is like with their buildings but that's kind of what it felt like and it i mean i feel like this episode must have been kind of cheap to make considering it was pretty much entirely just Rick and Michonne set in a few locations. But the thing is, as well, is it still felt expensive. Like, it still felt like just a normal episode, which usually when you see episodes like this, it's super easy to point out and go, oh, this episode's probably a one where they save money. It's one where they're just, you know, having a few characters in one location so that they can save all their money for a big episode later on. And if this was the main show, that's exactly what this would feel like and what this would be. But here, no, this doesn't feel like a cheap or a money-saving episode. This just feels like an episode that is needed. An episode that is really important for the two characters of Rick and Michonne for them to both really talk to each other about what has been happening in both of their lives. And it was it was definitely an episode where we learned a lot about what the two characters have been through. And seeing Rick kind of deal with the fact that he now has a son that he doesn't know what happened and then Michonne doesn't know what's happened to Judith or RJ or anybody who's back at Alexandria like they don't know anything about the Commonwealth or any of that sort of stuff yet so there's a lot of really interesting sort of things there where the characters are talking about things that we we the audience know about but both of them have no idea what's really going on back there to me episode four really felt like like a stage or a theater play sort of thing like because it was so focused on just the performances like deny and andrew were absolutely phenomenal in this episode and i've been saying already that like andrew and deny in episodes one and two showcase some of the best acting we've seen from either of them in the entire franchise and i think the the acting from both of them in episode four blew anything from them out of the first two episodes completely out of the water like it somehow it's just getting better and I, I, I mean, I don't know how, how far more they can go because I feel like, you know, they're already at peak, peak performance here where they're just being absolutely 
fantastic. Like Andrew's voice kept breaking when he was really kind of can, trying to argue his points to to Michonne in this episode, and it was really well done. It really reminded me of like Rick in season seven, which to me is still some of the best acting Andrew has put out in the show. It also reminded me of like in season three when Rick finds out that Laurie's dead and he comes out and Carl walks out of the prison and then Rick's like no 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 and he just kind of collapses on the ground some of this here also rem really reminded me of that which like that and season seven are what i think have easily been andrew's best acting on the show up until this episode here because this is just crazy like they both brought their a game and also i, I was saying in my review for episode two that i feel like this show very is very different to daryl dixon and dead city and that daryl dixon and dead city while sure they've got to focus on their characters that those two shows are very much plot focused like the plot is what is paramount to those shows and the characters are still very important but kind of come second to the plot whereas here i feel like the ones who live is completely different the ones who live feels like a show that the characters are the most important thing first and foremost rick and michonne are what we are here watching this show for the plot is secondary like the crm the jada stuff of course that's important but actually getting these character moments between rick and michonne far more important where the focus of the show is where the focus of the show should be because then we get episodes like this and it's crazy good i was getting a little frustrated with rick tread this episode because he kept making up reasons why he couldn't leave and it was annoying because it felt like michonne was giving him easy outs every time like michonne was like always saying well i mean you don't have you can leave because here's the reason why you can leave here's the reason why you don't have to stay that sort of stuff and rick was always like yeah well i da, 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 da. and that was frustrating me because i was like rick she's very obviously giving you completely legitimate ways to escape here and you're just not having it and i was kind of like is this a is this going to be bad writing like are they not going to be able to kind of give us a good reason why why Rick can't leave like are they just trying to drag this out and then we get the big breakdown scene where Rick talks about how he dreams about Carl and that he he doesn't remember what Carl looks like anymore because the CRM took that from him and that he just he's so terrified of losing everyone else and losing anyone else that he just he can't bring himself to leave and it's he's just worried about this and I was like no this wasn't bad writing this was just super planned out like a feeling that Rick is a broken character now, like he really is a shell of himself. And I and I made the comparison to season seven Rick a few times uh, in my other reviews as well, where I was like, Rick and CRM really reminds me of a Rick we saw in season seven when Negan had broken him. Rick is more broken now. Like Rick in season seven felt a little traumatized, shell shocked, a bit PTSD from Glenn and Abraham, but he was still in there. He just needed a few weeks because I mean I think what like season seven and season eight of the walking dead take place over the span of like two or three weeks or something crazy like that so rick just needed a couple of weeks to really get himself sorted to really kind of true the fact that he would just witness glenn abraham get their heads bashed in and that now he's he, he's back he's back he's got to take the fight to negan and all that sort of stuff like rick was never really truly broken he was just sort of extremely traumatized with what he saw and he just needed a little bit to get over that here though rick is truly broken like this is 10 years of rick being with the crm and he's he's not the man he once was at all he has been completely completely broken and it's like it's not like they're torturing him it's not like you know it's it's been it's been super on the surface and super noticeable like no he's just psychologically completely drained and defeated by the fact that he could never escape and that he could never get back to michonne and judith and now what he knows to be rj and it's like this is a completely different kind of of dynamic here than what he had with Negan where it was with Negan it was just surface level you know he'd been fucked around a little bit but it, it was super easy for him to get over this year it's not surface level it's deep it's in his head and it's it's like it's almost like brainwashing it feels like but just it's just a Rick that we're completely not used to seeing and it's scary and I really really like how they're handling this like it's very subtle it doesn't feel like it's too in your face and I don't know, Andrew's playing it really well, where it, it feels like he's really trying to be the Rick he used to be, but he knows himself he isn't that person anymore. He knows himself he will never be that person anymore, but he's trying to hide the fact that he's not that person, and he's still trying to, to wear this mask and wear this facade that he is still the Rick he used to be, when in reality, he's nowhere close to that guy anymore, and he never will be again. It's just, it's, it's really cool. And the Carl stuff was so emotional, I loved it. And Michonne, Sean was the MVP of this episode, constantly trying to get Rick out of there, constantly giving him reasons why he needs to just to just be back at Alexandria, he needs to be back with his people, that like, if they get out of there, they take the evidence that Jadis has, they destroy it, 
they, they even just they take everybody in Alexandria and be like they don't know that you know the Commonwealth's a thing obviously yet so they don't know that a lot of the people aren't at Alexandria anymore and it, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next two episodes with that because I'll be honest I'm not convinced that we're gonna wrap everything up in the next two episodes I think you know seeing Alexandria or seeing any characters from the other show is really unlikely I think we're, we're probably looking at a not a cliffhanger but very much sort of an open-ended ending where we can tell there's more story to tell because a lot of people have said that Andrew and Denai are done after this show that it's like there's no way they're coming back for more but I mean we said the same thing about Andrew Lincoln when when he announced he was leaving in season nine everybody was like well that's it Rick's not coming back Andrew's leaving the show we're never going to see him again he's done and then as soon as the episode aired we found out he actually was coming back I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same situation here where Denai and Andrew they're saying they're not coming back but the end of the episode six we're like we find out something or we get an announcement or there's some tease for something more because I don't know I feel like there's just there's so much to wrap up in the next two episodes that they're not going to be able to get everything done and there, I also just feel like you can't really get rid of Rick or Michonne without some kind of reunion with Judith and RJ some kind of reunion with Daryl some kind of conciliation of all of these shows some kind of thing where they brought together because also Beale Beale's a, a villain that is being talked up and being hyped up for years now like even outside of, like he, he was mentioned throughout all the world beyond never never appeared but even besides that like the showrunners the the writers have been hyping up Beale as this huge antagonist for the Walking Dead universe since since like the movies got announced so I feel like since we barely saw him in, in, in the first three episodes, we didn't see him at all in this episode. He's barely even been mentioned in this show, really. He's just kind of this sort of mysterious figure there in the background. And you also don't hire Terry Quinn unless, you know, you've got a really good plan for him because he's a fantastic actor. But I think there's definitely a lot more planned for him and the CRM. Like, I'm not expecting the CRM to be done with at the end of this season. I'm not expecting Rick and Michonne to be done with at the end of the season. I think this very much feels like the beginning of something much bigger. Because I think you, you gotta you gotta get the CRM to be kind of the threat that the, the characters are facing. Like, not just our characters in this show, but characters in Alexandria, characters in Commonwealth, Daryl over in Paris. Like, you've got to really bring a lot of this stuff together, and I feel like that's probably the plan. I think Beale is just this this antagonist that's going to be sticking around for for a while, which I think he should be. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. I just, if we find out that they're trying to rush all of this by the end of episode six, it might feel like this show's not going to stick the landing, but I really hope it will be. I've also heard some people say that, you know, they wouldn't be surprised if we saw either Michonne or Rick die at the end of this show. The, the surviving character then being somebody who goes after the CRM in whatever the next season or the next event is. Which, that could be interesting. And while I'm not opposed to the idea of either Michonne or Rick dying for good, I think there needs to be... I, we need to see a reunion between those two, between Rick and Michonne and, and Judith and RJ. They're, the four of them need to reunite and then after that, you do what you want with the characters. But I think we gotta get there first where we have them reunite. But yeah, episode four fantastic but i blew the first three out of the water and i already liked the first three so much and um, really excited to see what they do in episode five and six we're kind of in completely sort of fresh territory now. i know that there were leaks a few weeks back but i'm fairly certain the leaks were only for the first four episodes i don't think anybody really knows what happens in episode five and six because nobody got those screeners so really exciting to kind of go into these episodes completely fresh and see what the hell's going on i was lucky it didn't get spoiled for the first four but i know a lot of people who did so it's gonna be interesting really excited how did you find episode four and episode three of the walking dead the ones who live how do you want the show to end like how how do you see the episode five and six ending do you think it's going to end with wrapping up the crm and beale and rick and michonne or do you think there's going to be more after this these episodes are done let me know and if you enjoyed this video please like share subscribe and all of that and uh, thank you very much for watching and i hope you have an amazing day